attackers have been able to get in and tamper with software. So for instance, Russian hackers allegedly broke into large pieces of software used throughout the U.S. government and had access to U.S. networks as a result. And so things like this are very serious concerns that we need to address. Welcome to my office. One of the main problems that I'm working on is how to secure what's called the software supply chain. And this is the way that software that developers write turns into programs that we run and rely on. Effectively, there are not very good controls today. If you go to buy your lunch and they go and they make a salad for you, there's a lot of work that's done to prevent cross-contamination, to make sure that people have washed their hands. And unfortunately with software, we don't really have a lot of that. It's been shown that attackers have been able to get in and tamper with software. So for instance, Russian hackers allegedly broke into large pieces of software used throughout the U.S. government and had access to U.S. networks as a result. And so things like this are very serious concerns that we need to address. As a PhD student, I started to work to build a system to let people install and distribute software in a secure manner and also to do it efficiently. This was actually the very first system designed for doing this for what we now call the cloud. This was back before people were using that word. I started to think a lot about security problems that would come up when deciding which software to trust and how to install it and do things like that with it. And when I went and examined how other systems that were doing software installation were handling these problems, I found usually they weren't handling them at all. Or if they were, they were not handling them very well. That really started a large effort that I've had to try to fix different parts of the software supply chain one at a time. And as soon as we'd done work to fix one part, then we go and often look at other parts and just keep working to try to make things better. Some of the specific projects that I'm working on, one is the Tough Project, which is actually the hoodie that I have on here. And this stands for the Update Framework. And this project provides a place that you can get software from. Even if bad guys go and break into that server and take it over and do things with it, the damage that can be done to you is very minimal. Usually, if you just upload files onto a server, and someone breaks into that server, then they can just change anything and you'd have no way of knowing. You know, in the case of something like installing software on your computer, that's really, really bad. Because if they can install any software they want on your computer, they can just take it over and use your webcam to spy on you. They can watch all your bank transactions and transfer all the money out of your account into theirs and do all sorts of things. One of the, the things that Tuft does is it makes it so that an attacker isn't able to cause those types of damage to users that download software from the repository. The attacker might be able to do something like delay how frequently you see updates. Another project that we have that's in this space is called Intoto. And Intoto is Latin for on the whole. And what this does is you take in different libraries from different sources. You might have a documentation team that's translating your documents into Bulgarian and Polish, and you might have the programmers who are writing the code and an art team that's doing the art or whatever. And they're all working to put all these things in and then in the end things are supposed to come out. What Intoto does is that for all the things that come in, it tracks them using cryptography. We use a cryptographic hash to sort of snapshot what they look like. And then for every step, we track the things that went in and the things that came out. And we basically are able to make sure that everything flowed through your, your software supply chain in the steps it was supposed to, in the order it was supposed to, that there wasn't any kind of moment where the person who was doing the Bulgarian language translation all of a sudden replaced one of the files that a programmer was supposed to write with something else. One of the places that Tuff is used is in Internet of Things devices. Internet of Things very broadly is basically anything that's not a traditional computer. There's a version of Tuff that's built on the core 
tough principles, but has a few little tweaks that we designed for automotive. In fact, outside of automotive, it's also used on millions of other Internet of Things devices, like controls in factories and medical devices and other stuff like this. But it was designed specifically to work for the automakers. And so we've created an open standard, an open, completely free standard that any automaker can use and adopt. And you know, we're very happy that many automakers have adopted at least parts of the standard into their design to help fix issues that existed with the way they were doing updates. And what we really hope is this can provide a baseline for security so that one day I don't have to wake up and read in the news automotive fatalities due to a nation state most likely taking over a bunch of cars, causing them to all you know, accelerate or the brakes to stop working or lock people in the cars or all of those together. The supply chains are very, very different for very different parts of software. And so a lot of what we do is we make common security frameworks that often get used by many different types of tools, but then we have to go out and we have to reach out to the people that build the tools and help them to integrate them and help them work well for their specific environments. And so then they know they're getting something that has very solid security principles beneath it. It's been reviewed by a lot of experts and carefully looked at and works well with other systems that exist today. And we have to do a lot of that work to make sure that it, it works well in their environments. So one of the main ways that we tackle these types of problems is, first of all, we make sure we really, really understand the problem. And a lot of that is working along with industry or at least working with industry tools in a common way that they would use them. So we start from a close relationship with industry, working well with them, and I involve tons and tons of excited students who want to contribute. I love working with students, everything from high school students all the way up through you know, people who are postdocs who've gotten their PhD before and they're here you know, to add to their skill set and do other things like that. Really, anybody can come in and contribute and, and do what they can. And it's all open source software, it's completely free for anyone to use. We don't charge any of the companies or charge folks who want to use it. Our goal is just to make the world a better place.